Let's get right into it. Number 10. Your brain forgets on purpose. Imagine you're at the store, trying to remember what you came for. You stare at the shelf, confident it'll come back to you. And it doesn't. You leave, get home, and then it hits you. Toothpaste. Again. Here's the weird part. Your brain didn't just forget. It deleted it on purpose. Memory isn't like a hard drive. It's more like a chaotic librarian who sometimes burns old books to make room for new gossip magazines. Neuroscientists call this synaptic pruning. Basically, your brain deletes connections it thinks you don't need anymore. If you haven't used a memory in a while, your brain goes, hmm, outdated info, let's throw it out. It's meant to make you efficient, but in reality, it's the reason you forget your coworker's name five minutes after meeting them, yet somehow still remember the lyrics to a serial jingle from 2004. The disturbing truth is that your brain isn't loyal to your memories, it's loyal to survival. Forgetting helps you adapt, stay present, and focus on new threats or goals. It's like an overzealous personal assistant who keeps deleting your emotional attachments for productivity. They. So when you lose a memory, don't take it personally. Your brain just Marie Kondoed your past because it didn't spark joy. Basically, your hippocampus is that one friend who cleans up by throwing half your stuff in the trash. Number 9. You don't actually see the world. Right now, you think you're seeing me or reading this, but technically, you're hallucinating. No joke. Your brain doesn't process raw reality. It guesses. The world you see is a mental reconstruction stitched together by your visual cortex, memory, and pattern recognition. What your eyes capture is blurry, incomplete, and upside down. Your brain flips and edits it before showing you the final cut. Think of it like your mind is a lazy movie director. It takes low-quality footage and says, enhance, using your past experiences to fill in the gaps. That's why optical illusions work. They exploit the shortcuts your brain takes to save energy. Here's the creepiest part. Your visual system lags behind reality by about 80 milliseconds. That's right. Everything you see already happened. You're technically living in the past, like your whole existence is a replay with bad Wi-Fi latency. So when you trip and fall, your brain saw it coming. It just didn't tell you in time. Basically, you don't see the world. You see your brain's best guess of it, a VR simulation built out of bias, memory, and a sprinkle of hope. Number 8. Your brain invents reality when bored. You know when you feel your phone vibrate, check it, and nothing? Congratulations. That's your brain making stuff up for fun. It's called a phantom vibration, a modern hallucination triggered by anticipation. Your brain expects notifications so often, it starts generating fake ones to keep the dopamine cycle alive. But this goes deeper. When the brain gets bored, it fills silence with fake sounds, fake sensations, and even fake memories. That's why some people hear voices when isolated too long or swear they saw a shadow move in the corner when nothing was there. Your brain hates a sensory vacuum. It'll make noise just to feel alive. Evolution trained it that way. When early humans were alone and silent, danger was probably nearby. So your brain learned to invent stimuli rather than risk missing something. Basically, your brain is like a drama queen who can't stand peace and quiet. If reality gets too calm, it starts writing fanfiction. So the next time you hear your name when nobody called you, remember, your brain's just trying to keep the story interesting. Number 7. Your emotions aren't real, kind of. You might think emotions are these pure, raw feelings bubbling straight from your soul. Anger, joy, sadness, fear. But, they're not. They're more like bad translations. Here's the unsettling truth. Your brain doesn't feel emotions in some magical emotional zone. It predicts them, based on your body signals, memories, and environment. Your brain guesses what emotion makes sense. Sweaty palms, rapid heartbeat, must be fear, or love, or both. It's honestly winging it. Neuroscientist Lisa Feldman Barrett calls this constructed emotion. Your brain interprets data from your body, heart rate, breathing, tension, and then labels it using past experiences. So when you say, I'm angry, you're really saying, my brain took my current situation and made an educated guess. That's why two people can experience the exact same situation and feel totally different things. One sees a roller coaster and thinks fun. The other thinks death trap. The only difference? Their brain's predictions. Your emotions aren't lying. They're just improvising. You're basically living in a constant theater performance where your brain is the actor, director, and unreliable narrator. So the next time someone says trust your feelings, maybe don't. They're running on recycled guesses and caffeine. Number 6. Your brain is addicted to fear. You might not admit it, but your brain loves being scared. Not horror movie scared, existential dread scared. The kind where your heart races, your pupils dilate, and your survival instincts go, oh yeah, we're alive now. The human brain evolved to crave stimulation. Fear triggers a massive cocktail of adrenaline, dopamine, and endorphins, a neurochemical fireworks show that makes you feel alert and powerful. That's why people line up for haunted houses, scary movies, or skydiving. 
your brain treats fear like caffeine with extra plot twists. But here's where it gets dark. Your brain can't always tell the difference between real and fake danger. When you scroll through disaster news or watch apocalyptic videos at 2 a.m., m, your amygdala, the brain's fear center, fires up like it's under attack. It floods your system with stress hormones, even though you're just sitting in your bed eating chips. Your brain evolved for saber-toothed tigers, not Twitter. It's still trying to survive in a world that mostly threatens your Wi-Fi signal. Basically, your brain's addicted to fear because it mistakes panic for purpose. It doesn't care if it's fighting for survival or just overanalyzing a text. As long as it feels alive, it's happy. Number 5. Your conscious mind isn't in charge. You like to think you're the one making decisions. You choose what to eat, what to say, who to text, right? Cute idea. Unfortunately, your conscious mind is more like a spokesperson than a boss. Most of your decisions are made before you're even aware of them. In experiments, neuroscientists have detected brain activity related to choices several seconds before participants consciously decided. In other words, your brain chooses, and then politely informs you afterward. This phenomenon is called neural readiness potential. It suggests that your conscious awareness is like a news anchor reporting events that already happened. You're narrating your life, not steering it. So when you decide to get ice cream, that decision was actually made by your subconscious craving system, which then sent a memo to your conscious self that said, Hey, you wanted ice cream. It's unsettling, right? The you you think is in control might just be the public relations team for the real boss, your subconscious. Basically, your conscious mind is the intern taking credit for the CEO's work. Number 4. Your brain rewrites your memories constantly. You probably think your memories are like files stored neatly in your brain, waiting to be opened exactly as they happened. But no. They're more like Wikipedia pages that anyone, including you, can edit at any time. Every time you recall a memory, your brain doesn't just play it back, it rebuilds it from scratch. Using bits and pieces from other experiences, it's called memory reconsolidation. Basically, your brain opens the memory file, tweaks a few details, adds some creative flair, and then saves it again, overwriting the original. That's why eyewitness testimony is famously unreliable. People don't mean to lie, their brain already did it for them. Even scarier, your memories can be implanted. Researchers have convinced participants they did things that never happened, like getting lost in a mall as a child or meeting Bugs Bunny at Disneyland, which is impossible. By the way, because Bugs Bunny belongs to Warner Brothers, your brain doesn't care about accuracy. It cares about storytelling. It wants coherence, not truth. So if the story makes sense, your neurons go, yeah, that probably happened. Yay. Basically, your memory isn't a camera. It's a sketch artist who keeps redrawing the same scene worse every time. Number 3. Your brain punishes you for being lazy, even when you're not. Ever feel guilty for doing nothing, even when you've earned a break? That's not your productivity app talking. That's your brain's ancient guilt mechanism kicking in. Humans evolved in environments where doing nothing usually meant starving or dying, so your brain equates inactivity with danger. When you rest, your limbic system gets anxious and floods you with cortisol, the stress hormone, as if to say, hey. Lazy bones, shouldn't you be hunting right now? In modern life, this system makes no sense. You're not in a cave, you're just on your couch, but your brain hasn't updated its software in about 100,000 years. So now, when you try to relax, your body panics like it's in mortal danger because you're not doing something useful. D. That guilt you feel scrolling on your phone after work? It's evolutionary junk code. You're not lazy, you're just running an outdated operating system. Number 2. Your brain values pain over pleasure. You'd think evolution would make us chase pleasure, food, love, comfort. But nope, your brain is wired to prioritize pain. Pain is a survival tool. It screams, don't do that again, while pleasure just politely whispers, that was nice. The brain processes pain more vividly and remembers it longer. That's why one insult can ruin your day, but ten compliments barely register. It's called the negativity bias, and it's evolution's way of keeping you alive. Because ignoring good news never killed anyone, but ignoring danger definitely could. The brain's pain network even hijacks your attention. When something hurts, physically or emotionally, it locks in, forcing you to analyze, predict, and avoid pleasure. Meanwhile, fades quickly. You get used to it. Scientists call that hedonic adaptation, but it's really just your brain saying, don't get too comfortable, something bad's coming. Basically, your brain treats happiness like a snack and pain like a life lesson carved in stone. Number 1. Your brain might be a parasite host. You probably think you're in control of your thoughts, but what if some of them aren't even yours? Yeah, buckle up. There's a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii that loves brains, including human ones. It normally infects rodents, making them lose their fear of cats so they'll wander into danger and get eaten. The parasite completes its life cycle inside the cat's stomach. Evolutionarily genius, morally horrifying. 
But here's the kicker, it can infect you too. Studies suggest that around a third of humans carry this parasite in their brains. Most people never notice, but it's been linked to subtle behavioral changes, more risk-taking, impulsive decision-making, even differences in personality. It doesn't make you a zombie, sorry to disappoint, but it might nudge your choices without you realizing it. Maybe you're more reckless, or a little more confident, or less afraid of confrontation, all thanks to a microscopic hitchhiker playing DJ with your neurotransmitters. The idea that a single-celled organism can tweak your behavior is both fascinating and terrifying. It means the you in your head might not be entirely you. Your brain, the thing you trust most, could be quietly influenced by something that doesn't even know you exist. Basically, your brain is an Airbnb, and there's a parasite refusing to check out.